Good afternoon, everybody. And um, I'm very, very glad to be invited to this conference. Um, it's a wonderful occasion. And um, so I hope that I'll be able to um, uh, introduce you to something um, uh, quite interesting. So um, <clears throat> when I first heard about this conference, I was very excited because the one thing that I always thought needed to be established um, between Eastern and Western astrology is some sort of a common ground that brings us into the 21st century astrology. A shared understanding, if you like, of, of our art. So when I got my invitation, I thought what I, I had to think about what I could present, and I decided um, to try to talk about the midpoint system um, in Western astrology as it's probably the closest modern Western technique that can be deemed a science. I got an understanding that um, Sri Gopal wanted uh, to um, try to join together Western and Eastern thinking. And um, I think that midpoint astrology um, can fit in with the Vedic system. And um, to that extent, this is what this talk is about. So, um, could I uh, have the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> firstly, I'd like to introduce uh, a little bit of history um, around the midpoint system. In, uh, in the ancient texts and the ancient studies of astrology in the West, we have um, Ptolemy and Guido Bernacci, who uh, um, who uh, both referred to um, half suns in their calculations of astrology, and um, with that in mind, then the idea of midpoints was already set into place. Um, in the time of Ptolemy and also Guido Bernatti, which was around in the 12th and 13th century. Um, next slide, please. Um, but there are two Western astrologers from the 20th century uh, who you could possibly fondly term the gurus of midpoint, and they, they, they developed the system, they taught the system. And um, this, this man here, Alfred Wick, and uh, who started the Hamburg School of Astrology. And he revived the use of the astrological midpoints. Um, and then, next slide, please. Reinhold Ebertin, uh, who then further researched the midpoints technique, and he introduced the biological and psychological correspondences uh, that the midpoint technique is famous for. Reinhold Ebertin um, also published a book. But the, together, these two men in the Hamburg School of Astrology in the 1920s and 1930s in Germany, they also um, developed two other systems that are linked to midpoint, although these are very different subjects, but they also um, <coughs> uh, did cosmobiology, or did develop cosmobiology, and also a technique called the 90 degree dial. But that's just for further research. Um, so, can I have the next slide, please? Well, I needed to publish a book uh, that a lot of the soldiers in the West we all, we all have a copy of this. It's called The Combination of Stellar Influences. And it, it basically analyzes each midpoint combination and then gives the um, biological and psychological correspondences of uh, each midpoint. So, um, for you to understand midpoints better, uh, I spoke to a Vedic astrologer in London who I said, any idea how I can explain to people in India about this um, system? Uh, is there anything that they use in Vedic astrology that could be considered a, a midpoint? And uh, she said to me, oh, you want to use the Brihu Bindu? Can you use the next, the next slide? Thank you. She said, use the Brihu Bindu system, uh, the Brihu Bindu midpoint. 
And this is, um, I believe, um, a, a, a special midpoint in David astrology, which is of the maximum destiny in karma. And this is the Rahu, the, the, uh, the, the Rahu and the Moon. The combination of Rahu and the Moon that makes a point in the chart. And, um, and this is called the destiny point. So by revising and recording the calculation method of the previous menu, then you will see that it is similar to the Western midpoint system. That will help you understand how we can start working with midpoints. So, <clears throat> the Bindu, which is the exact degree of point, is arrived at by, uh, by taking the longitudes of Rahu and then the Moon, which are both counted from North Earth, the celestial longitudes, and then you divide by two. And that gives you the calculation, and then you can you put that into the chart. Now, as I understand it, in Vedic astrology, the Vrigri Bindu is this invisible point, if you like, um, that's uh, extremely sensitive, extremely sensitive to transits. And so, the same with midpoints in the West. Just keep in mind the idea of Vrigri Bindu and how it works, and then you can apply this thinking to midpoints, and you'll see that there is a correlation in, the, in a similar type of way that they work. Although, of course, midpoints are unique planetary combinations. And by the way, I should also say, uh, today I'm talking about the Sun-Moon midpoint. This is just the first one to talk about. There are actually, if you take the seven traditional planets in Rahu, and you combine them together, there are 56 midpoints. So there are plenty of midpoints to go through and plenty of research to be done in this subject. But today, I'm just going to do Sun Moon. So, <clears throat> once you've got your pre-beginning midpoint or your midpoint, then you can look for transits and conjunctions by a benefit or a malefic planet. For example, you might have, uh, knowing your own charts, possibly knowing your own place of the pre but you might know when these times come around in your life. You may have a Jupiter transit and you think, yes, life's doing well. I'm reaching my destiny, things are good. Then again, you might have a Saturn transit to it, and you might be like, oh, you know, the weight of the world on my shoulders is so great. But at the same time, you know, you're always understanding your own destiny through it. And with that in mind, then I want to look at this sun and midpoint a bit more to give us an idea of how um, benefit and malefic transits to that point can also affect us in our lives. So, can I have the next slide, please? So, this here is the symbol that we use in the West for the sun moon midpoint. The symbol of the sun, uh, and a dash, and then the symbol of the moon. And in Vedic charts also, uh, it can be noted as SU dash and O. But, you might be asking, well, what is the meaning of this sun moon midpoint? Well, we're looking at a combination of the sun and the moon. So first let's look and understand the moon a bit more. Can we have the next slide please? The biggest secret of astrology is the moon, particularly in past life astrology. The moon is essentially the reason we're born. And the placement of the moon by its degree and its condition in the chart is the reason that you were born. So if you like, it's a container, it's a medium, it indicates the past, it indicates our instincts, and its emotional reflexes and responses, as well as being psychic perceptions and precognition. So these are several pointers that we're adding what we're now is we're creating a little cauldron of, of combinations, okay? So the moon, think of the moon, think of those things. Imagine you have a little cauldron, you're putting moon things in. Now we're going to add a bit of sun stuff. Next slide, please. So we end up with the understanding of, us, of the sun. The sun is the sole light giver in our solar system. All the other light comes from the sun. Everything else is reflected from it. The basic energy of being, all the light. So it's consciousness, it's awareness, it's willpower, and it's individuation. So, into your cool room, you've got some moon, add some sun, 
mix it up and you have a combination. Next slide, please. So together, we then have the two luminaries, the moon being the main reflecting surface of the sun and the light. So we have the sun and the moon together. In the west, we call it the moon and luminary, as it reflects the sun, which is the source of all the light. Luminary, by definition, is a natural light-giving body, or a person who inspires or influences others. A person. Well, this is interesting, because you see, how we see the, mid the sun and midpoint in astrology, and how you often see astrology can be manifested as people coming into your life, because we have to reflect our lives off of everybody else. So, <clears throat> a person, maybe that person is someone that you can find in a relationship. And in the West, we use the sun and midpoint for the idea of relationship astrology. So, this leads us to the next slide, please. The inner marriage of the sun and moon. Yeah, in Western astrology, the sun and moon midpoint is the point for relationships. The sun is our essential life force and vitality. The moon is our habit patterns and emotional needs. The sun represents our father, or male energy. The moon represents our mother, or feminine energy. Together, the sun moon midpoint is blending the yang and the yin, the masculine with the feminine, for their strongest combined expression. You put the sun and moon together into one container, and you have a sun moon midpoint. So everybody in their charts, in, in Western charts, in tropical Western astrology, has a sun moon midpoint. And because it is essentially a mathematical point, it can, I believe, now, after particularly talking with some other astrologers, and I'll talk about that in a minute as we get to it, but um, this last couple of days, I've, I think we can possibly find an actual point from the West that we can put into, possibly be accepted to go into uh, Russian charts. So we'll talk about this, and I'll keep on developing where I'm coming from with that. So, um, <clears throat> could I have the next slide, please? So, let's look at the sum of midpoint a bit more. The sum of midpoint represents the synthesis of one's ego expression and emotional energy. This inner marriage represents our closest relationships. When one of your inner planets, the Sun, the Moon, Mercury, Venus and Mars, makes a hard aspect, which is conjunction of law, square of 90, opposition of 180, semi-square of 45, or sesquiscare square of 135 degrees, to another person's sun moon midpoint, a significant bond is indicated. Okay, so <clears throat> this is a point that we've created out of, the, out of the maths of the zodiac, and we're placing it into the chart, and then this point, this invisible point, which is highly sensitive to things, particularly relationships, is then aspected by other planets. So, in your own chart, in your own major chart, you can find, you can see what planets are lined up to your sun midpoint, sun moon midpoint, and you start to get a better understanding of what your life is like, particularly around situations to do with relationships. But also, this is used in synastry between two people. So if, you could, if someone comes to you and they have a planet that is, that is very close to or aspecting your own midpoint, then suddenly you suddenly find a great affinity with them and love blossoms and things happen. So it's very exciting to find this point and to know about this point. In the West, often we do quite a lot of training in, in astrology before people even get to midpoints. This is actually quite an advanced technique. And um, I didn't know about my sun and midpoint for a good few years before, um, before um, I've, when I've discovered midpoints, and then I suddenly realised the importance of it. So it, I, I think it's a, an interesting thing for people to look up to find out for themselves. Okay, um, can I have the next slide, please? So let's have another look. There's a few more bits on, on this, and then we'll look at some charts. So in marriage astrology and relationship astrology, and also in predictive astrology, 
This is an extremely sensitive point that is activated by transits, progressions, and directions. It plays an active role in relationship beginnings, changes, and endings. When you meet someone who has planets aspecting your sun moon midpoint, they are very fated. They are involved in your destiny. Have a look for it in your own horoscopes, and when you get a special feeling for someone, see if your sun moon midpoint is activated. Can I have the next slide, please? So, we'll suddenly look at this idea of naked planetary pictures now. This is uh, the reference that we give midpoints as uh, planetary pictures. There is more than just using midpoints to look for the right person in sinistry and relationships. There is also the personal natal chart discovered to be made. When a natal planet in one's own horoscope makes a hard aspect, conjunction, square, opposition, semi square, sesquic quadrate, so, which is also the eighth harmonic, so it's a division of numbers, a division is by four into 360. <coughs> Four and eight into three hundred and fifty to a particular midpoint in this lecture, the sun moon midpoint. This combination of naked planet making aspect to naked midpoint is notated thusly. So what I'm going to be showing you now is um, how the sun moon midpoint works. And you see these symbols here on the screen. Um, so SU uh, equals sun moon. So that sun equals sun moon. What happens there? is if you have your invisible sun moon midpoint created in the zodiac at some point, if the sun happens to still be within an aspect of, of, of that point, then you'll get your natal sun, the planet, um, still making an aspect to it. So that's called sun, sun, moon. The same with the moon. So because this sun moon midpoint is an invisible point, still within your chart you have the sun and the moon in the places that you expect to find them, and they know where they are, is once you discover this other midpoint, other planets make aspects to it. And this sets up a little, uh, or, or, or quite a great sort of dynamic within your own chart. Um, so Mercury, NE, equals Sun Moon. Venus, VE, equals Sun Moon. MA, Mars, equals Sun Moon. JU, equals Sun Moon. Jupiter, SA, Saturn, equals Sun Moon. So that's the planetary features, that's how we notate them for astrological purposes for understanding the formula of each chart. <clears throat> and now I'm going to show you some, um, some charts of very different stars um, <clears throat> who have some interesting midpoints that I think you might find quite interesting. So um, I'd like to thank Esan um, because he really has helped me immensely. He's developed his own uh, Vedic Astrology program and we just spent the last couple of days putting Vedic charts in, Rasa charts, with the Sun and the Midpoint, which is circled in red. Okay, so you can see it here, and um, with the uh, Mac chapters, and I'm going to come to that at the end, as to uh, how we think this um, very potent area of research can, can be undertaken now. So, um, but firstly, let's have a quick look. I, I did have a major point, so I don't know, hopefully it still works. It just... Uh, it just worked. Oh, no, it's too bright. Okay. Uh, okay, so um, if you have a look at uh, the chart on the right here, um, it's Ashwara uh, Arai's chart. Her summary midpoint is marked in red. Um, uh, in the third house, you can see in red there the moon dash sun. And that's at 10 degrees of Sagittarius in a tropical western chart. Okay? Now, <clears throat> Um, I haven't done that much research on, on Ashwara Rai's life, and, and, uh, but I understand she is a, a huge star and very popular. And uh, I do believe, through all the um, newspapers and media, she has quite a, a, a tough time with her relationships in the past. And um, I know she's happily married at the moment, but uh, you know, she has, I, I do believe, had problems. And so when I looked at her chart, I thought, well, maybe her son will midpoint will reveal something to us. And, um, <clears throat> Sure enough, um, if you see that, that uh, using tropical western chart here, the 10 degree Sagittarius, there is a, um, it is pretty much 45 degrees away from her Uranus at 24 degrees Libra. That is a semi-square in um, the, uh, <coughs> uh, in, in, in the eighth harmonic. So, uh, so I've put here you are, uh, Uranus, uh, equals sun moon, 45 degrees semi-square aspect. And um, can you go to the next slide, please? 
Now, taking it from Reinhold Edelton's book, let's look at Uranus equaling Sun Moon. He says in his book, and this has been in, in publications since the 1930s, um, an intensification of independence within relationship, sudden developments, possible breakups. The urge for freedom, the urge to act independently, lack of adaptability, and inner rebellion. Sudden events in friendship, marriage, parental home, shared upsets, sudden conflict, separation of the partners. Now I'm not saying that that that's happens every time, it doesn't happen, you know, but transits can happen to people's charts and they can find that things happen they might want to wonder why things happen like they do. And I've just found that in this particular chart that is she has Uranus Sun Moon, so she maybe requires a lot of independence in her life, as well as, of course, Wanting happy marriage, she might find she has independent streets. Can we go to the next slide, please? <clears throat> um, Abhishek Bakan, and this is her husband, and um, he also has um, he has uh, Mars uh, equaling the Sun Moon at a 90 degree square, and Neptune equaling the Sun Moon at 90 degree square aspect. So Abhishek has. Um, his summer midpoints in Pisces in the fifth house, marked in red on that chart over there. And um, that's at, I think, uh, 16 degrees of Pisces. Um, and that makes a square aspect to his Neptune at 13 Sagittarius and his Mars at 16 Gemini. <clears throat> and in here, in his Vedic chart, again, it's circled up, uh, here in red. And, um, making the same aspect, I believe, in the sidereal. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? So, Mars equaling Sun Moon, again, referring to Edith's book, and then Neptune equaling Sun Moon. <clears throat> Energy helping or upsetting relationships, drive for fulfillment, the urge to bring to fruition ideals and wishes, sexual attraction between husband and wife, desire for children, the urge to marry, the realization of joint objectives, Sex union and marriage, Neptune equaling Sun Moon, inner discontentment, the urge to torment oneself, the disposition to get upset quite easily, misunderstandings, illusions or deceptions, and the undermining of associations. So, again, I'm not saying that these are these are just indicators, and they are a formula that we can look at in astrology to greater insight. If if people were if if anybody was to come to talk to a midpoint astrologer about things like this, I, I could start to give them ideas about things. And then we look at transits. Essentially what we're looking at here is transits and understanding better things through transits. I could make some predictions, but I don't think I'm here to do that quite yet, you know. So but we'll see what happens, you know. Can I have the next slide please? So we've now got Charlotte Khan. Now he's a really interesting one actually because um, if you look at his um, tropical uh, uh, Western chart. He has his sun and moon in the fourth house there, marked in red. You can see the the, uh, the moon dash sun, and it is conjunct Venus. Venus, of course, is the uh, is a very benefit planet, a very lucky planet essentially, and also um, very connected to marriage, of course. And um, and with a Venus sun and midpoint, you can pretty much expect someone to be happy go lucky. You know, probably quite humorous, probably quite funny. You know, they, they naturally have a sense of humor and, um, and they probably get on with people very well. So, Charlotte Khan has this point in his chart. I'd like you to take note of the degree point of that midpoint. Notably, Venus at 25 Sagittarius and um, the Sun in midpoint at 27 Sagittarius. Just keep that in mind for a minute. In his uh, Vedic chart, we have the summer midpoint here um, uh, in the, I believe that's the month house there. So, um, so just keep that in mind, all right? And we'll go to the next slide, please. So, <clears throat> Venus, in, uh, uh, again, in reference to the, uh, the book that we used, Venus equals sun moon, friendship, love and awareness, harmony, powers of attraction between the sexes, artistic interests. Friendship between lovers, marriage of love, harmonious marriage. Sounds pretty good. Can we have the next slide, please? I do believe he married Gary Khan. And they've had a very happy relationship for since 1991. 
Now, if you look at Gary Carr's chart, she has her ascendant in Sagittarius, natally, at what degree? 27 Sag. So, when Gary Khan saw Charlotte Khan, she thought she really fell in love with him. And this is an example of how the Sun and Midpoint works. And then I have a feeling that they maybe went through many things in order to create their relationship and to create good harmony with it. But um, I thought I'd like to point that out to you as, as something that could be considered quite interesting. Um, her Sun and Midpoint is that not to be Sagittarius, uh, and um, with Neptune. And so, the, uh, and if you look at the Vedic chart, the, you can see how someone would point circled up there in red. Can we have the next slide, please? Um, so the first we've got Sun, Sun, Moon, and Moon, Sun, Moon. Can we just go back one slide as well, actually? Um, just look at the, I'm um, oh, sorry, can you go back? Back to thank you. Uh, um, forward one, thank you. So, um, <clears throat> because there's some of the midpoints at North Sagittarius, so moon at 15 Capricorn, and that's 45 degrees. So, that's an example of the moon equaling the sun moon midpoint. And then her uh, sun moon is at 14 degrees Libra, and that also makes the uh, sun moon midpoint at uh, 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 45 degrees aspect as well. And because she has, a sun, in her data chart, she's got a sun moon square, they're 90 degrees apart, which is of a very driving and motivating aspect to have anyway, but that sets the midpoint as being where, where it is. So forward for one slide again, please. So um, with the sun, sun moon and moon, sun moon, um, illuminating achievements, needs and sensitivities, highlighted relationships, seeing the light. Sensitivity to need fulfillment, a harmonious character, inner balance, Good relationship between parents and partners, making contacts with partners and friends, joint success, having to do with public life. I do believe that um, it was Gary Kahn who motivated the relationship between her and Charlotte Kahn, and, um, and once they got married, she told him to start doing film acting. And, um, and that is, she was helping activate his Venus Sun Moon, so he was less of a happy go lucky and then became a famous film actor using his charms. So that is how that works. Um, and I think that's a really good example. Um, can we go forward one slide, please? <laughs> we have Salman Khan, another great, uh, very famous actor, very action man, I do believe. And um, he has Mercury equaling the Sun Moon, a 45 degree semi square, and Mars at Sun Moon with the launch degree conjunction. Um, Mars Sun Moon. Um, is, uh, well, let's look at this, uh, I'll put it again, it's in the Vedic chart as well. Uh, but let's just go forward one slide, please. Uh, ah, we already had, well, so I'll just put the Mercury one in. Thoughts about male female principles, contemplation of marriage, and association of young people. Well, we know he does a lot of humanitarian things, he's very into his charities, being human, being humanitarian, because he's also an Aquarius with Mars and Aquarius as well, and some of the midway of Aquarius, then he's into very charitable things. And, um, and, but the idea of contemplation of marriage, but maybe not getting married, is, is, could be also seen as part of that sun, moon, whites on Mars. Uh, maybe he's always pushing ahead with his next project and not thinking, because the Mars energy pushes that forward for him. Um, and uh, one more slide, please. And we have Priyanka Chopra. Who is in this world? And for this, uh, sit down, for this chart, um, uh, most of the midpoints we work with the eighth harmonic. Uh, that is to say, it's a, um, divisions of eight within 360. But with, I, I thought I'd put her in because she has the trine, um, and midpoints do work with all aspects. It's just that maybe the eighth harmonic has more motivational push to it and a driver to it because it has more uh, more energy behind it. Um, with, the, with the try aspect, it, it's, it's more of a flow and, uh, and makes things very easy. Um, she comes from a very big uh, body of family, she's in this world. And um, she has her son of midpoint at four degrees of cancer, and it makes a try to Jupiter at one, uh, one Scorpio. Uh, and being in this world, well, Jupiter would be, would be the great benefit that probably provided that. And she also works in films as an actress. So, uh, and, and uh, I think that's a, a very sort of link, and it's the summer midpoint in cancer there 
um, I think highlights how her family have really helped her develop her own career. So, um, uh, can we just go back a few more slides backwards, please? Um, oh, that one, did you Yeah, that, uh, yeah, just to, it's going to the symbol of the summer midpoint one more time. Um, So I, I, I think we're at a stage where um, I've discovered now that uh, with SO's help, we've put, been able to put this point into writing charts. And I think this provides a really good place to maybe start some research. Um, we've, just in the last 24 hours, we've been talking about how, um, how this summer midpoint can fit quite nicely into that chapter. It's all very, very new areas to think about, but, um, and I'm not going to, you know, I just say, this is interesting, we could do something with it, and, um, and I do believe that this is something that um, we can find common ground with, and um, so I hope that's, uh, I hope I've explained myself well enough with that, and um, it's been a real pleasure to talk to you all, and I hope you enjoyed that lecture, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Julian. Uh, the most important thing to observe in midpoints is R2. One is the midpoints between the luminaries, the midpoints between the sun and the moon. They are very important. And the other is, on the contrary, luminaries as midpoints of planets. If you put your finger on this too, then I think the battery is as yes, good as one. Of course, the interpretation is not as simple as it is made out to be. But uh, by and large, midpoints play a very important role, and that is what Julian has shown to us. So, somebody would like to come in? As a matter of fact, you want to learn marriage problems. Uh, he has given the best possible exposition. In the light of the science system, in the line of the system, and midpoint is important. Midpoint would change in science, and midpoint would be different in and this and in Indian Vedic system. This is one of the questions again, which needs to be You better we should take science system, whether we should take Vedic system. If midpoint changes, midpoint changes, then the life, the style would change. Partner would change. Your partner in business would change. Just think over it. And this is again, I have nothing but to suggest that it would be your labor in case you do research. And find out the conflict between different systems. Supposing 80% system, Western system works, accept uh, Western system. In case 80% uh, very system is established, accept and leave 20%. Others should test both simultaneously. In case both are tested simultaneously, you will find a wonderful result which will fill the balance of either of them. So, just, I have only one thing to say, just experiment, experiment, experiment. But it is very, very, very well. While raising the point of meditation, uh, from midpoint, of any power, not in this term midpoint, the even the practical astrologer has made his place on midpoint. So midpoint is a very good, important thing. Please judge it before announcing and predicting any judgment relating to marriage, and not only marriage. In respect of any segment of life, 
Uh, and we should give him some class. Don't be my dad. <laughs> <laughs>